Welcome back to part two of how I cycle the double century last summer. Now this is really becoming like an ego trip and I, I totally despise that but since I committed to this idea I'm going to continue with it until it's out there shared then my heart will be at ease finally and if you haven't seen the part one on preparation and purpose then i totally advise you go and check that video first because there at the start i go through all the disclaimers so that it will be easier for you to understand where i'm coming from what's my experience and just the purpose of this video, these videos, and actually my ride. This part is going to be about focus and mindset. And I believe the best way to share what was happening in my mind is to tell pretty much the whole story of the ride and how I felt, what was I thinking, all the emotions that I had. So let's just dive into it. I believe it was the 5th of August when I decided to partake in that adventure and actually the initial plan was to go the day before but the weather was so shit, it was raining the whole day so I thought well maybe tomorrow is going to be better. Yeah right. <laughs> and also I had plans for the next week so it was that day or no other day. So on the morning of 5th of August, I woke up and I looked out a window and it was raining. It was raining, the streets were wet and my first thought was, well, this is fucking depressing. <laughs> but since I committed to it, I never quit something that I have promised myself, something that I was waiting for all of these fucking years to finally happen. And when the day comes, it rains, the weather shit so what <laughs> like it's just water it can't it cannot stop you from doing it yeah it may be harder but it doesn't make a big difference so i just packed my stuff i don't think i had any breakfast i just had water i didn't feel like eating at four o'clock in the morning so i headed out and it wasn't that bad like at first rain wasn't so intense so i thought it will probably stop after a while and I just remember going through the empty roads of the city on a Friday morning with nobody, no cars, no pedestrians, just me and the bike and the fucking city on my hands. And oh my god, I was so fucking happy. I was so blissful. As I was moving forward, the rain wasn't stopping. Actually, it was getting much, much worse. So when I approached the lane that connects Riga with Yurmula, it was so fucking intense. It was raining buckets. I think my back even hurt from the intensity of the rain. I couldn't see anything further than like three meters ahead of me. Also around that time I bumped into a guy who was on a mountain bike so I surpassed him but he sort of caught up with me uh, when I was standing on a red line in front of a road construction area which was the second challenge that I had to face but then I had him to talk with so it was relatively easy and yeah I remember that conversation we were talking about how our friends and family react to us doing these epic challenges and he was by the way going to Wentzpils it's 200 k's and I was telling him like I want to go to Kolka and back it was it's like 320 k's and he's like holy shit like you're really going to do that I'm like yes and he sort of he was the only person on that ride who I encountered that truly understood me and believed in me because he was also a cyclist yeah I was sort of made fun of how we're the crazy people that wake up at five o'clock on a Friday and go ride like 200, 300 k whilst others are just sleeping the whole day in their warm bed. So yeah, after that construction road, we separated and went our own ways. But that construction piece of gravel road totally fucked my bike. Like it was wet, the sand was everywhere in the brakes, in the chain ring, in the chain. In the cassette, and I totally fucking hate when it's hard to change gears and it's all dirty and disgusting. So I stopped in the nearest city and uh, <laughs> I washed myself and my bike uh, in a pit of water on the ground. <laughs> it was 
so funny and the people like there was one woman that came up to me and she asked like is this your morning shower and i was just like yeah girl that's my morning shower and later she asked like where are you heading and i said i want to go to colcon and back home and i remember the look she had on her face like so vividly it was like disbelief surprise and a little bit of you're fucking insane and i asked her like where are you heading and she was on that city bike with little wheels that you can fold and take with you and i think she was heading the same way but by the shore by the beach so i advised her that there's a lot of shells and you know fish ribs that you can get a puncture really easily there i have had experience with that too that was my first stop and i was feeling pretty good i wasn't tired yet i was a bit like finally woken up i guess so i just continued and i think this was afterwards but maybe it was beforehand I'm not really sure, but I think it's both. <laughs> Where there's a long stretch of road with forest on both sides and there's nothing else to focus on. There's no changing landscapes, like nothing changes. Just this road which you go to the end of, you turn and there's another long ass road that's, that awaits you. I think that was the most annoying part of that ride, like to Kolka. Back home it was different because you already know the road and it's even more boring. <laughs> <laughs> because I usually ride to explore and see different landscapes, experience things and when you're just seeing the same landscape hour after hour it gets boring and you start to focus on your body, you start to feel different feelings in your legs, in your arms, how tense is your neck, like all of these little details start to pop up out of nowhere and because I also didn't have headphones i didn't listen to any music any podcasts any of that i just wanted to experience everything raw <laughs> like physically you can move forward it's not hard but your mind is bored nothing's happening nothing to focus on nobody to race no new landscapes give me something i had to find ways to keep my mind busy and not focus on how stiff and tense everything feels so what i did this will probably sound insane but i started to vocally talk to myself and retell the story starting with the morning <laughs> basically i just recollected all the memories that i had that day and I tried to retell them to myself and that kept me busy, that kept me thinking. When I felt especially tired or sloppy, I just said to myself like, this is easy man, it's not hard, you're just sitting and pedaling, so pedal back home. <laughs> and then I remembered like all the things that I was grateful for, I taught about people that probably have much, much bigger problems and you know, suffering and sadness and pain at that moment. Um, so that made it much easier, you know, just shift your focus on something else. That's a great way to shift your focus because you start to think about one thing and it goes deeper and deeper and deeper and, you know, you never stop thinking. <laughs> and I remember vividly the last long stop that I had before heading back home. It was like 60Ks until finito. And... I remember being so fucking stiff. The feeling was so weird. I can't exactly remember how it was, but it was intense. And I just sat on the ground and didn't fucking care about anything. And I just had to have this moment with myself to just relax and feel everything that I was feeling. Every single little detail. And... I just looked up and I think the rain started to rain again and I could see it was starting to get darker and my bike wasn't working properly and I knew the stretch of road with the road construction side was still coming and I knew I'm going to get dirty again and I'm going to fuck up the chain and brakes and everything <laughs> and I just was like okay just stand up get your bike and just get your ass back home it's not hard it's just 60 k's you already did 300 k's and it was fun 
it was great experience so just finish it you don't have to sprint you don't have to get the segments nothing just go slow pedal 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 and you you'll finish it and yes the first pedal strokes after that break felt freaking horrible but after a while i just got used to it and it felt pretty much the same as it did before the stop and I was really fortunate to not have, a, have any knee pain or arm pain or back pain or even ass pain. I felt stiff like everywhere in my body but I didn't have any intense pain in any area and also after that stop my mindset totally switched. I'm also the person that I can easily manipulate with my feelings and emotions if I have the energy and because I got, <laughs> I got, I had skittles all throughout the ride, like a lot of sugar in my system during the ride so I had enough energy to switch my mindset and not be a victim which I never ever try to be yeah <laughs> what else also the rainbow showed up so it sort of added to my positive thinking and as I was approaching the city it felt tiring but in my mind it was all good relatively uh, but after a while I got hungry so I had to stop and just push as much date bars as I possibly can into myself because at that point I just fucking hated that taste but I knew that if I don't do this now then it's going to end badly so I tried to do that and fortunately after a while a huge fucking storm came up and it started raining like fucking crazy and if i was hazy beforehand that just gave me a massive wake-up call because it was freaking scary like the lightning was striking the thunderstorms were everywhere it was dark as fuck like i couldn't see where i'm going the only thing that sort of lightened up the road was the lightning <laughs> So yeah, and it was raining freaking buckets. I didn't have brakes left. Like my brakes totally were polished away by sand and water. So when I was coming down a bridge, it was like, I'm trying to stop with my fucking foot. It was freaking insane. So that I think that was even the most fun part uh, from the whole ride. I remember the roads were like, freaking rivers the cars were driving like halfway in water and then i had to cross that freaking river by bike so yeah in the last bit of my ride the adrenaline really kicked in which helped me to get back home sane and safe i guess and when i finally reached home my bike was completely fucked and the only thing that i could possibly think of is just to get something to eat because i was starving and just go to bed and sleep and i don't care about anything else so yeah i came back home i ate something and i went to bed and uploaded the strava <laughs> so yeah in short that was my story and how i dealt with all the emotional and mental challenges that i had on that ride and i believe the most important thing is to be able to switch your focus just Think about positive things, don't give in to excuses or the pain or the discomfort that you're experiencing because what you focus on is how you feel, how you feel determines what you do and what you do determines your results. So <laughs> just think about what you're grateful for, think about how will you feel when you accomplish it, think about all the benefits that you will get by doing so and th this doesn't have to be uh, just for this ride, this can be applied to any real life situation if you're sad, hopeless, angry, stressed, then just stop for a moment and realize that you are in control of it. Don't let anybody control your emotions or how you feel, what you do. Find your goals, find your purpose, even if it's something really insignificant like being happy or finding joy. Just focus on it. Focus on little things that you have to do every day to accomplish it. <laughs> Think long term and sustainably. So yeah, this was on mindset and focus. The next video is probably going to be about technical details like the calories, water, whatever else I can think about. Possibly also goals so I wouldn't have to make another video specifically on diet. So as always, believe in yourself. Your mind is your limit. 
get amongst it, man. <laughs> Be vegan and carve the fuck up. Just skip the pepperoni, keep the dairy aside. I know what you're thinking. That's bruschetta. Now nah, we got the soy cheese counterfeit cheddar. Hook up the nachos, guacamole tacos, avocado sushi, domo arigato. What do you eat? What about me? What about me?